Hey there, this is MathCamp321 presenting a lesson on writing a linear equation in point slope form. This form is really, really important in calculus, particularly. It's used all the time. And at the top of the page, you'll notice that there is the point slope form reviewed with you. And a couple things that I would just like to make uh, very clear to you is that when you're using point slope form, the very first y that you see in the equation stays y. And the very first x that you see in the equation stays x. So you're not going to substitute in for the first y or for the first x. So what I have here for you uh, to off to the left is a diagram of a line with four points identified on it. And I think I'll just label those points A, B, C, and D. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of these four points and write the equation of that line in point slope form. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to identify the slope of this line. And I can pick any two points on the line and calculate rise over run. For convenience sake, I think I'm going to use C and D because all the values are positive. So the slope, which is described by the letter M or the, the uh, variable M, is going to equal in this case 3 minus 1 over 5 minus 2. This simplifies to 2 over 3 or 2 thirds. So the slope is 2 thirds. Now I'm going to go to point A and I'm going to write the equation of this line in point slope form from the perspective of point A. So I'm going to write y minus a negative 3 is equal to 2 thirds times x minus a negative 4. So we have several instances here where we have minus a negative and we know from algebra 1 that that turns into a positive. So I'm going to go ahead and make those adjustments. So what we have here is the point slope form for this line from the perspective of point A. Now I'm going to do something extra here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this form into slope intercept form. Just to, just to show you something that's pretty cool. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by distributing the 2 thirds through. And now I have to account for this plus 3. To move that 3 to the other side, I'm going to have to subtract it. But instead of thinking about it as minus 3, I'm going to think about it as minus 9 thirds. Keep in mind that 9 thirds is equivalent to 3, but it's going to be more easy, easily combined with the 8 thirds that's already there. So when all is said and done, I get y equals 2 thirds x minus 1 third. Okay, let's start the process again, but let's do it this time from the perspective of point B. Using point slope form for this point, it's going to be y minus a negative 1 equals 2 thirds x minus a negative 1. Once again, we have several instances of minus a negative, and that's going to turn into a positive. So it's going to turn into y plus 1 is equal to 2 thirds times the quantity x plus 1. So here we have the point slope form uh, from the perspective of point B. And what's interesting to note here is while these two equations look very, very different, they still describe the same line. And I'm going to illustrate that by, again, taking this line that we just found here and rewriting it in slope-intercept form. So once again, I'm going to distribute the 2 thirds through, and then I'm going to subtract 1, but instead of thinking about it as minus 1, I'm going to think about it as minus 3 thirds. And then simplifying, I end up getting y equals 2 thirds x minus 1 third. And this here is a direct match with what we had when we did the same thing from the perspective of point A. So even though the point slope forms look very different, when you transform it into slope intercept form, they look the same. The reason this happens is because a line is made up of infinitely many points. And the line, though, has the same slope. So while the slope remains 2 thirds, you can use any of those infinitely many points. So there's really infinitely many point slope forms for each line. I'll do this process one more time. If you feel like you have it, you could stop. But if you want to watch it one more time, I'm going to do it from the perspective of point uh, D. I'll just skip to point D. So this would be y minus 3 equals 2 thirds the quantity x minus 5. There's your point slope form, and now just as a check, I'll write this as slope intercept form to make sure we're definitely working with the same line. So I'll start by distributing the two thirds through. 
it's time for me to, to add 3 to both sides, but instead of adding 3, I'm going to add 9 thirds. Simplifying this, I end up getting y equals 2 thirds x minus 1 third. And once again, all of these lines boil down to the same thing. y equals 2 thirds x minus 1 third. Yet, all of their point slope forms were different because you could pick any point that you want. So I hope this made sense. This is point slope form. Remember, the first y stays y and the first x stays x.